Hello, everyone. Welcome to not even a named episode of Off Nominal. <laughs> wow, it's right at it. Even... Oh, man. <laughs> right I'm at not it. Not even a named episode? Wow. You will be by the but end yeah, of it. We, we name them at the end. So it's and usually when people say that, it happens yeah. pretty quick. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we might have already Sheesh. just named it right now. I don't yeah. even know if we left it. But. <laughs> That's a solid point. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so we have a, a great guest with us today, Kristen Fisher from uh, CNN. Kristen, welcome to the show. We're really excited to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. I've been listening to y'all for a while, so I'm pumped to be on. Amazing. <laughs> it always warms our heart when we find out that someone listens to us and we, yeah. don't, we didn't know it before. <laughs> so uh, it's really, well, really good. I us. really like, I like talking about space very casually and conversationally. And, you know, the fact that you guys add a cocktail into the mix, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> we mostly like it because our little corner of, of horseshit internet sometimes can make its way into larger <laughs> audiences, such as when we got Miriam Kramer to ask SpaceX if they were inspired by McDonald's Play Place to build the cupola. So we try to, like, <laughs> be a generative source for, for tidbits that make their way out. So I feel like we have a good opportunity to, like plant some things in your brain here that will be unveiled great whenever artemis do it. one actually happens mm, that's so, a great point. which could be a while uh, so uh speaking of cocktails i yes. guess what do you got today Kristen? well i'm uh, a wee bit embarrassed i i feel like for some craft beer lovers like both of you cocktail bartending gurus that mine is going to disappoint, but I was running home late from work. I didn't have time to stop and get anything better, but I feel like this is kind of a trip to Florida with Hurricane Ian hitting. Love it. It's a Pacifica. Um, mm -hmm. I would drink this on the beach. So oh, I 100% Cheers would. to Florida during this difficult time. Yeah. I'm a beer girl. I, I have, love drinking beer. I have beer, drank so. that on the beach. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Several different beaches, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Pacifico. I, I have a memory of Pacifico, actually, when I was um, really uh, my, parts of my family have been going to Mexico in various capacities for as long as I can remember. And I remember my uncle one point asking my other uncle who lived here. Yeah, the last time I visited you, you know, we drank some beer. I don't remember what it was, but it was so, so good. And they were like looping through all these beers in this conference. I was like seven or something. I still remember this conversation. <laughs> and then when my uncle finally said it was Pacifico, and he was like, Pacifico. I just remember him like shouting to this guy about how excited he was. He remembered that beer. So, yeah, that's a core memory. That story yeah. would only be better if it was Tecate and you just like happened yeah, to forget that it was, it was a beer <laughs> all these years later. Yeah, yeah. Well, well the other thing I like about it, my daughter pointed this out to me. My daughter's name is Clara, and I was drinking one, and I had it out, and she said, "Look, mommy, there's my name." <laughs> it literally like, says. You're Clara like, that's right that's there. why you're named so, that. We named you after the yeah, where the Pacifica is from. Named after, you're named after Pacifica, <laughs> sweetheart. Awesome, Anthony. What do you got? I have uh, a Lawson's Little Sip, uh, which is a great local beer, but. I have it in a fresh pint glass that I bought from Snake River Brewing. I was out there last week, so thought I... When we go to breweries, we like to buy a, a glass. If they, Only if they brew the beer at that place. We don't buy them if we're going to like the tap house of the brewery. We buy them if we're at the actual brewery, and we mm. were in Jackson. So uh, as I know, a running bit on this show, Jake, is my rankings of national parks. Um, yes, pretty yes. much how many of the 60 are better than Joshua Tree. And I'm happy to say Yellowstone <laughs> and Grand Teton above Joshua Tree firmly, my number one and two spots. So are you I agree a with Josh that. Joshua Tree is spectacular. I am oh, pro okay. Joshua Tree. Um, wow. Or you're judging me hard already. But, Jake is. He has no um, dog in this fight. It. But yeah. I've never been to Joshua Tree. So you, both of you could be lying to me. And it could be yeah. this most medium middle of the road. Uh, it probably would be for you, honestly. No. Kristen, <laughs> I, would still I love Yosemite, the desert. I would put Yosemite above Joshua oh, Tree. Oh, for but sure. I would yes. not be knocking on Joshua Tree. Oh, I am. Yeah, I do love the desert also, but my only contention is that's the worst of the deserts that we have in America. So, yeah. That's it. That's where I'm at. <laughs> and yeah. publish. Yeah. <laughs> what, about Van what about the desert of West Texas? You're telling me, like, the Van Horn parts of Texas? I don't know. Which... I haven't been to that one, so. Yeah. Oh, well then. Okay. But notably, there's no national park that's just the desert down there. They have Carlsbad Caverns, and they've got, uh, what else they got? Guadalupe Mountains. Big Bend, I think, is close to there, right? That's pretty far. 
Mm. Texas is, is giant. Then, Texas. Yeah. yeah, it's giant. Yeah. Anyway, what did you got, Jake? Did you go to the beer company? Did you make a fancy I did cocktail? Not, no, I made a cocktail. So I've got a, uh, this is called a tequila sour. I don't know if this is like made up or a real thing, um, <laughs> but I found it on the internet and it's got um, tequila with like a bunch of lemon and lime juice and some syrup, syrup but then the the weird thing, I guess, is there's an egg white in it, which I've never done in a cocktail before, but I wanted to try it today to see how it goes. So it's all foamy. You can see that's from the egg white um, and some garnish in here. So, yeah, tequila sour. It's very sour. Man, some of these you put a lot of effort into. Yeah. Not that much effort. It looks like more effort, but once you build the cabinet up and you have all the stuff there, it's just like... Like egg white, though. That's the part that made the me The cherries go. are mm. a nice touch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's good. All right. Where do we even start? Where it's do we start? It's been a week. It's been a week. It has been a week. Yeah, it's been some. There's been some news the last like little bit. There's and we we have time. live news to cover yeah. in about 24 minutes. So <laughs> I know. Yeah. tracking that. Yeah. Are you guys going to be Jared, monitoring that? Yeah, like, yeah, how we got are we it. Going to know what's going we got on. It. Okay. We got we we got All Twitter right. up. We'll 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 do live hot takes. So we can't have a TV personality <laughs> on here and not do live hot takes. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of part of the bit. Uh. <laughs> Do we, are we starting with Artemis 1 stuff or are we starting with Kristen's coverage of Artemis 1 stuff? Which is more fun here, Jake? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we should talk about we should talk about the hurricane a little bit first and just kind of what's going on with all that. Yeah. So, um, you know, so so Kristen, you've been talking about how your your network is all hurricane all the time now. So my first question would yeah. be like, is is any of this Artemis stuff even going to matter after this hurricane has passed? Like, has this been all uh, completely overshadowed by the weather weather news? What do you think? Mm. Well, I think it's a really good thing that Artemis did not try to launch <laughs> anywhere <laughs> yeah. near close to this hurricane because, um, you know, I mean, it's a really serious storm and people in Florida are going to be hurting for some time. And, you know, I think clearly uh, the folks at KSC and with the Artemis program made the right call, uh, albeit a bit of a late call, but made the right call to, to roll the rocket <laughs> back. So um, I don't know. I'm just glad to see the storm pass overhead rocket safe inside hopefully no more fires i mean <laughs> this rocket has had to deal with a lot um over the last few weeks so hopefully this is the the end of its troubled road and it can get back on that launch pad pretty soon yeah yeah it's had hurricane history too about, yeah what do i have What'd thoughts you say, about sorry? what do i have thoughts about now, now I'm you like, have is thoughts there about a take the fire coverage scene? The fire coverage. Remember? Oh, it was just another one of the like the rocket and spacecraft were never at risk. And I'm like, you you had to evacuate the VAB. Like even if they even if a rope was smoldering, at some point in there, you were acting like they were at risk. So like even if eventually they weren't, you know, and, and you mentioned this is the same as when the ISS was doing, you know, cartwheels in space and they were like, the crew was never at risk. I'm like, I don't <laughs> think they would agree with that when they were like, no. oh, I've never faced this way in the space station before. <laughs> like that. <laughs> So I just I hate like I always think of things like you have a you have a an account of goodwill and when you debit from that you need to be damn sure that that's a good time to waste a little goodwill and a little like one sentence you know flipping eh, they weren't at risk is just not really a useful spend of goodwill when you're a couple of launch attempts and a couple of tests into a launch campaign it's like what is that even doing you know making that's making nobody feel better. I just can't really get my head around that part of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I thought it was silly too, because it was just like, all you had to say was that there was a small fire. Uh, all of our emergency procedures worked exactly as we had planned them to. Everyone is safe and there's no damage. Yeah. And the press nailed release. it. And then there's like, there's, <laughs> there's no questions about it yeah. at all, right? But then you put in a weird sentence like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, you guys really dissect these press releases, you know. Really, <laughs> we really do, yeah. <laughs> really going into, you know, oh, yeah. every line and word. I like it. All yep. right. <laughs> what else are we supposed to do? I mean, that's we have two specialties. We have okay. uh, reading every last line of a NASA press release, and then the single paragraph in every article that Jeff Faust has ever written that just calmly eviscerates whatever the subject of the article is, with it like no opinion expressed, <laughs> but just like. Yeah, our favorite are the Starship ones. They're just like, you know, six months ago, they said he'd launch next month. And the month after that, it was three months from then. And then it was, uh, you know, a year from now. And it's like, there's always this one succinct paragraph. And, and those are our two favorite 
uh, written material, pieces of written material on the internet. Mountain so. every story. <laughs> They're always yeah. there. You got to look for them. <laughs> um, so, I mean, so Christian, we, we want to really uh, pick your brain about this Artemis stuff because, you know, as Anthony just alluded to, we, we, we dig deep into this stuff and, you know, most of mm -hmm. our, most of our palette of reading material is like super focused space you know, outlets. So it's like Faust and Space News or, you know, Eric at, at Ars Technica or stuff. But you're at a, a big, a big news organization that deals with a lot of stuff that, you know, is beyond Artemis and stuff. And so your audience is also, you know, obviously very different. And I think that's really interesting to kind of talk about. So do you want to maybe just, I don't know where to start with that, but like, how do you yeah. approach covering something like Artemis or any kind of space story when you work at CNN instead of, you know, uh, uh, off nominal dot com? Like. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably read the same stuff as as y'all do. Right. But so the way I like to think of it is every day we have a 1030 meeting. It's our beat meeting and it's started off in Zoom, you know, like everything else. But now it's all in person. Most of it. And everybody in the DC Bureau gets together and you go around in a circle and you talk about what's happening on your beat that day. And so, you know, it's the White House has their own meeting, Cap Hill has their own meeting, but this meeting, it is everything from your national security team to your justice team and Supreme Court team to your agencies and transportation team. At the very end, um, they go to me, space. <laughs> and, you know, everybody in the CNN Bureau, they are dialed in on politics and justice and NATSEC and all that. Like they know everything about all of that in minute detail. But space, I mean, you know, they just don't follow it, um, you know, like they do all the other normal traditional DC beats. And so I love this meeting because I can kind of use it as my testing ground to see what people know, what they don't know, what words they're familiar with, what words they're not. And I always come away from it being like, man, I either I really sold that or <laughs> <laughs> I need to do a better job. But they I have found like people will have no idea what I'm talking about. The DART mission, I told them about DART for the very first time and they were like, what? That's so crazy, <laughs> you know, and it's just these people who are so my colleagues who are so plugged into so much um you know even they a lot of times don't know about these very technical things leo low earth orbit i mean just like the the basic stuff that you mm -hmm. guys talk about all the time um and so then you zoom out and you look at you know the american public as a whole and you know i look at what i do as a lot of it is part, you know, educational. Like you have to educate people on um, what mm -hmm. private companies and the U.S. government are doing in space. Um, but it's also getting them excited about it, getting them interested. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I do it. I try to when I'm framing my pieces and like getting ready to do a live report. I obviously try to like get, you know, the news first, like get that off the top. Um, but it's so important to just kind of provide a bit of background education context. And it's really hard to not like, you know, use the, the acronyms and the lingo <laughs> and the stuff that, that we're used to. But like you really like people will tune out. People will not listen to you. People will not understand. People won't care. Um, and so I, a lot of my job is really trying to figure out a way to and this is where I can kind of like test it out in that 1030 meeting figure out what people do know about, what they don't know about. And from there, you can kind of, um, you know, moderate how how in the weeds you go. Hmm. But I mean, most people don't know what Artemis is. You know, I would yeah, yeah, venture yeah. to say most people don't know that NASA just crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid. Um, so I, I, I like getting people excited about it. I feel like I, I noticed that you, you talked about the language a lot in there, which is one I had specifically in my head of like to ask you about. About I felt like your your reports always have one piece of jargon up front, and then you can like <laughs> use then you would go in and explain like you you you're very selective about which space jargon makes it into your report because you can't 
like all the names are are pretty dumb to be honest like if you just talked about the technical issues that artemis one had you're like fill lines and valves and quick disconnects and you know all these the the soft goods is my favorite that they keep saying soft goods <laughs> soft like, goods. Just say seals like it's so <laughs> dumb soft. that you say soft goods <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I, I feel like you do a great job of, of figuring out what word should I explain today? It's like a, a Sesame Street word of the day. Like which space word should mm -hmm. I have as the word of the day today? <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's, that's that's a good way to go about things, especially in an era when if people are interested, they can look it up. Otherwise, like just explain the one that matters the most. Well, and perfect mm -hmm. example of that was during like the, well, the first and second Artemis launch attempt where they were having, you know, these, the hydrogen leaks and like having to explain that. And they were, and you know, CNN to their credit, they were super into it. I mean, they were coming to me for live shots every 30 minutes and they were like, explain to us this, <laughs> this hydrogen leak <laughs> problem. And they, they really wanted to get into it. Um, but so how do you do that in a way that, you know, your average viewer can still follow and understand when they're, you know, cooking breakfast for their kids and trying to get them out to school and still kind of make it interesting and make them feel like, you know, they actually can can follow what you're talking about. Um, so on on big launch days where you're doing a bunch of reps like that, uh, that's that's definitely one of the things that I think about the most. Like, is the average person at home understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of reminded that we had, um... Uh, we had Lori Garver on the show, and we were we were having this, this hypothetical about uh, how weird it is that the NASA administrator reports right to the president, right? Like everyone else, like is all like under like a mm -hmm. cabinet secretary or something. And so now I'm imagining like if the president has a meeting of all of his or her direct reports, and there's like all these cabinet secretaries, and at the end of the table is the NASA administrator, <laughs> and they're all like, "What's okay? What's on your plate?" It's like, oh, "Okay, well we have this thing going on with Russia. Okay, big. Okay, and what's on your plate? Well, we're going to try and reinvent all of healthcare. Okay, great. And what's on your your plate, <laughs> Mr. Administrator? And then, and then you're just like, "Oh, we crashed into an asteroid." <laughs> Let me tell you all about uh, the, the 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 eject a plume of this. Like you know, just something really weird like that. <laughs> so you're saying Kristen is specifically uh, certified to be a NASA administrator. Is what I'm yeah, getting yeah. out of this. Kristen, yeah. Kristen Sitting at a NASA table of uninterested individuals yeah. that you need to explain <laughs> the high the density targets. They're genuine. This like all the people that I sit with at this meeting. Like, and I'm going to speak for them. I'm going to speak at a turn. But they're. Um, I, they're, they like to save me for the end because I usually, you know, tell them something that's like out there that they didn't know about that's, you know, kind of cool and interesting yeah, and yeah. fun. And I mean, that's part of the reason I wanted to, you know, get into covering space full time anyway. Hmm. That would be an interesting <laughs> thing to talk about for a second, because not that long ago, you were not covering space full time. And uh, <laughs> I would love to know if like, were you headed this way? Always, because uh, I think if people read like how you ended up where you're at, they probably have different feelings <laughs> on how you got there. But you have space in your family very deeply. And uh, was this like something that was always on your roadmap that you just were now getting around to? Or was did it just a good opportunity? Like, how did that come about? I, well, first of all, as a kid, I mean, both my parents were NASA astronauts, flew shuttles in the 80s and i just think there's something about for me at least there was something about both my parents being astronauts everybody would ask me do you want to be an astronaut are you going to be an astronaut when you grow up and like <laughs> as a kid i don't know it just like i was just like I just wanted to prove people wrong kind of like i just want to do my own thing there was just such an assumption yeah, yeah. that i would go into the that's a tough spot too though because and... when you're a kid like every kid wants to be an astronaut at some point and you're like probably <laughs> in this like i guess i guess but like should i should i, I don't know <laughs> yeah and I, w I was always really interested in space but i kind of just always wanted to you know pave my own path in the world um and i was really into i mean i had to watch every space shuttle launch on TV. And back then, you know, every launch was actually carried on the nightly news. So I think I kind of got into news that way. Um, but I, I had been pushing people to hire me as a space correspondent for a long time, since about 2012, 2013. And, you know, this is right after space shuttle retired. There wasn't a ton of interest in space at the time. 
Um, I actually interviewed at CNN back in 2013 for an aviation correspondent job. And I was trying to make them um, like hire me as a space reporter too. I was like, I can do aviation space. Um, and they ended up hiring <laughs> somebody else, a wonderful internal candidate who is still at the network. Um, but, you know, around that time, I was just, I was looking for a job and Fox News offered me a job. I was living in DC at the time I covered politics and I took it, worked my way up and uh, ended up spending four years covering the Trump White House. But I just got burned out. Um, on... That takes a weird. toll on everybody, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that, that I, that's I a mean, thing that shocking, happened to you. I yeah. was just, I was super burned out on politics and some of the things that you know, happened during my my time there. And um, I really wanted to cover something that I felt was, you know, contributing to the betterment of humankind. Um, and I didn't feel like politics necessarily was still doing that. So when my contract came up, I uh, repitched CNN on um, the need for, you know, uh, another space correspondent. And uh, I am ever so grateful that they, that they took it. So that's how I ended up here. <laughs> it's not like there's a shortage of news to be covering these days. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's there's really tons. picked up. We, we talk about that a lot. It's like even, you know, we started doing this six, seven years ago. And even in that time, it's like, it's really amped up to a point where like we cannot keep track of all the stories. There aren't enough slots in our weekly schedule to cover things <laughs> even on top of all of a podcast we make uh, aside from this. And uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty hectic beat these days. So. Yeah. Um, that's cool. That that's good to see that you know CNN is interested in that. So. Yeah, and they've they've formed like their own space beat. Um, you know, back when I mean they've they've got like a huge digital team now. And then when you look at, um, I mean, one of my favorite things that I was doing with CNN Plus, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> they had this. They were letting me do. They were letting me host these like hour long shows for launch i hosted an like a 45 minute show on a soyuz landing and i was like man i don't know if i like if yeah. i know enough to talk you thought you thought we were niche soyuz <laughs> um but i had so much fun doing that and i get yeah, if the like, cnn you know, thing ever goes watched... south i think nasa space flight would would really use someone like you <laughs> to cover the most obscure <laughs> space events <laughs> it was so much fun though i felt like i was like commentating like a you know, a sporting event. Like I really saw the <laughs> the appeal of the. And I'm trying to imagine that. you being like, and, you, and here comes the. <laughs> here comes the Soyuz, uh, of course, invented by OKB one in the 1950s. <laughs> with the Italy designer. Uh, well, Sergei it was Poirier. it was uh, Mar <laughs> it was Van de Heij's return. And oh, so that was a good one. there were all these, yeah, yeah there one. were all these, you know, geopolitical implications. Yeah, is he going to get kidnapped? Yeah, yeah. Is he not? Russia, <laughs> yeah. How's he going to get back to the U.S.? Are they going to, you know, are the cosmonauts just going to wave goodbye to him and leave him there? Okay. There's been some great space stories this year. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned, like, even in the, the Trump White House time, like, there was a lot of space stuff going on at the White House level in that administration. So maybe yeah. you got a little sampling of that since there was enough going on in you know, and more Pence and, and Brinstein than than Donnie himself, but absolutely. Well, th that was actually kind of how I started, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, my yeah. way into Look this uplifting <laughs> stuff. Was, you know, with with Pence and you know the National Space Council, Artemis Space Force. I mean, they really did. Um, they did a lot um, to to make space more mainstream. And yeah, I mean, you can say they made. You know the phrase space force the the butt of some jokes but they they did it it's there they created it and you know one thing i like to point out as somebody who covered both the trump and the biden white house was you know this was i mean how many policies carried over from the trump administration to the biden administration space was one of the few areas where they actually maintained mm -hmm. yeah. in this the civil sector and in you know, the military sector from Space Force to Artemis, they not only allowed them to continue, but really championed them. So I I don't know, I just thought that was pretty cool in a Washington yeah. that's usually so divided. Yeah, yeah. When, when you were doing like uh, White House coverage for the Trump administration, so you, you, you would have been approaching these stories not as a space correspondent. Like how did the the 
space stuff seep into the mainstream news? Like what what are some of the like the the things that help you decide like, OK, well, Pence announcing Artemis is important enough to transcend past whatever the space mm. correspondent is into the, <laughs> you know, into the, the general the, White House the coverage, of, yeah. the, the yeah. general the coverage of, of the Trump White House. Like, yeah, like I'm curious to kind of hear how you parse that, because I guess that's that's even still applicable today because you're still CNN. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of that meeting, you've got to be able to say something that is, you know, that is a that's going to lead to a good story versus like you know where i can i can lead with like oh there's a there's a supply shipment error going to jpl it's a big you know i can i can do that on my show but you probably can't do that on your show so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm curious to know how you make that decision well a lot of times it's not left up to me right you know there's higher ups that you know say yes you can cover this no you can't but you know a lot of uh, back at fox and at cnn you know it's my job to pitch my bosses on why they should let me do something right mm-hmm. like so it's up to me to be like this is super important people are going to be interested in this or if they're not we should make them interested and here's why um at the white house if something i mean because i was at the white house if, if something was even remotely space related and pence was doing it that i would definitely get to cover it because you know i I was there and i you know given my background and just kind of the things that i like to cover space stories on the side at the time they would let me do it here um you know i I mean biden hasn't done at cnn biden hasn't done a ton of space stuff right i mean he announced the first picture of the web space telescope um kamala a great great event yeah (laughs) Which, Rock you solid know, ten minute event. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm if I'm the folks at Webb who have been working really hard on this release, the day before you find out that, you know, yeah. you're going to get big footed by the White House. Yeah, yeah. You're getting a TikTok um, worth of of event coverage the day before. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it is the president. You know, re- elevating your you know, you're a baby. To yeah. That if level, you ever work on something that the president wants to talk about, you're like, yeah, I'll do that. You do for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Um, but, you know, I mean, Kamala Harris, she, you know, she obviously tried to go to Artemis, but there there hasn't been, this administration hasn't felt as um, space focused as, you know, the, the previous one, yeah. obviously. Even the National but, Space you know, Council stuff, some... I feel like they remember every three months that they're supposed to do the, one of those and then they do an event. Yeah. Like it's not... Uh, the other ones, I feel like there was so much pomp around the original National Space Council meetings, original as in Pence era. Uh, right. Well, and they actually like, remember, they used to like do sprays where they would bring the press in and, you know, we'd all cover it. And and then we'd leave and they'd have like a private real a meeting meeting. meeting. Yeah. Um, a meeting meeting without, you know, us little shits, <laughs> you know, standing and listening to their every word. So, yeah. you know, I think it, you know. That's where the real the real stuff gets done, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And hardly any um, uh, VP appearances at IAC so far, right? That's been uh, it's been a little dry in the IAC run. Yeah, <laughs> but like I don't know that in DC, that's like I could I could hop in a in the car for ten minutes and and do like a whole event that was irresistible yeah, yeah, for yeah. Mike Pence. And we got to hear the theme song live, which was great. The little Vice President theme yeah. song, one of our favorite Vice little President bits of. Fun. Yeah, it's like I don't know. That's the funniest thing to me. Still, if you imagine if every time you went somewhere, you got a little theme song played. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. How about that Space Force theme song? Yeah, I didn't even listen oh. to it yet. I saw the lyrics. Is oh, it's actual... real bad, Andy. Is it? It's real bad. You gotta listen. Oh, you gotta listen to it. Should I pull it up? It's, it's good. I think you should pull it up. <laughs> I don't even who. What source has this? Oh, here we go. He's Space Force. <laughs> Space Force anthem. <laughs> pull this up. Wow, I'm gonna take a yeah. swig of beer for this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here we you go. Better prep yourself for for this one. Oh, it starts off. Starts off pretty. Are we gonna get a takedown notice for this? Probably. Yeah. You receive a takedown notice. The Voices of Freedom Music Force. is the YouTube account that I'm looking at. Is this so loud? I can't tell how loud this is for everybody out there. Oh, I haven't seen the music video. Is this a legitimate music I don't know video? If this is right. <laughs> I don't know if this is the right one. Is this the wrong anthem? Is this the I wrong anthem? If- Okay, now we're definitely going to get a takedown notice from someone <laughs> who had their own uh, custom version of the uh, of the Space Force theme that they had written. <laughs> Let me go to spaceforce.mil. Give me a second this, to pull this up. <laughs> this looks more right. This is dangerous. Here we go. CNN's uh, Jeannie Moose did like this whole piece on 
on the Space Force song. And she was like, I wonder what it, it, I was trying to think of like what it reminded me of. And she had like a little scene of Mighty Mouse at the very end. Um, <laughs> you know, the- you, Here, is this you, the right one? First of all, we wanted a song that spoke to us. Oh, this darkness. is like a whole thing. That brought to life. This is how like long the behind the scene. Coast Guard. Does it get to the song? There it is, nice. Oh, baby. Wow. Huh. I'm just imagining this at like a at a, uh, a football game, you know. I see it. Yeah. I guess. Has, you know, I guess my question, Jake, is like, what did you expect from this? You know. I, okay, so I will. T I'll totally like admit that I didn't even know the branches of the military had theme songs, and I didn't know what they <laughs> sounded like. But, so that was my that's exactly what I pictured. I yeah. Would, okay. Yeah. Right. But I just thought it was like I just felt like it was very uh, I don't know. I was just like we need a theme song. Can someone? Okay. Uh, we are we are space force and we are mighty <laughs> and strong and we are really high up and you can't even see us and we are good <laughs> and go space force. Like it was like like that kind of like lazy level of lyric writing. I don't know. Yeah, I guess they spent a long time writing it though. They spent like oh, it, I it's bet been like did, a yeah. year in development. <laughs> This is like when 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 Northrop Grumman hired that design firm to redesign their logo, oh, and they probably went away for like that. two years, and they came back with a, a little line that goes like this, and that was like, Bonk. and then they got yeah. a they got a bill for like three hundred thousand dollars to design that logo or something. <laughs> three hundred thousand, Jake. Boy, howdy, know. have you not interacted <laughs> with major branding agencies? <laughs> Some ungodly number. To it has seven digits a, at a minimum. Yeah, a, che a chevron. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm imagining. But yeah, I guess I didn't realize you would probably. Knowing your your Canadian national pride, like you probably weren't in tune with the whole theme song thing. I whereas no. the Army Navy game was in Philadelphia many years in a row, and I went to like every single one of them. And uh, so yeah, I was used to the theme songs. You know, who's the Space Force going to play? I guess Air Force. I don't know. Actually, Aren't they part I did of the a Air story Force? on Space Force uh, basic training. Their very first ever, their first class of like full, you know, only guardians, no no airmen full, you know, guardian uh, instructors and drill sergeants and everything. And I asked them that question. I said, you know, could we maybe, you know, see a Space like Force, a scrimmage, Air though. Force football <laughs> game in the future? And, you know, they didn't they didn't say no, but none in the works now. But right, it ha there has to be something Eventually, like that Eventually, they'd have to have their own school, though, right? Like, they'd have to... Have to have their own school, and I think they need. I mean, they need more people. people. They need more people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Space Force football team would look like a pickup football game right now. Like it's like whoever's available, <laughs> like, we'll take them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's fine. Boy, oh wait, we should check check Twitter. Is this when the announcement's happening? Oh yeah, it's almost time. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. going on? Nothing's happened yet. For, I think they're going to fix Hubble Jerry, guys, or something, been... or go see Hubble. I mean, the list of press conference participants are pretty. You have you have Jared Isaacman from yep. uh, the Everything. Polaris Project, SpaceX, Hubble, NASA. Kathy's gonna be on. I mean, but are they gonna fix it? To, yeah. Does it need to get fixed? I guess the gyros are done, right? They're like three of them are or two or three of them are dead or something. I don't know. Would you hire I mean, Jared I, I, Isaacman to go fix your space telescope? I wouldn't. I like, mean, I, you can go see it if you want, but I wouldn't hire him to fix it. But See, I, I was imagining if this he's press paying conference was... to go fix it, if he's paying, yeah, he could cover the fix fixing Hubble, of my space telescope. He, I mean, sure. if if he's gonna pay to go fix it, I mean, what's he, he gonna do though? Hire John you know? Grunsfeld, like bring him in? I guess <laughs> he could maybe be a trainer. He could train. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Who uh, would you bring up maybe. to fix Hubble if you were gonna do this, Kristen? Your parents, I probably. Mean... No, Grunsfeld. I mean, he, he, he's the original, <laughs> right? I used to babysit for his kids, actually. Lived in the same neighborhood. So why not? Um, wow, wow. Yeah. Was he good at fixing stuff? I mean, I he was busy, you know, fixing Hubble. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was the I state of repair much... of his home? <laughs> <laughs> his fridge didn't really get that cold. His sink was uh, leaked did, a lot. Did no. the doors weak when you focused. opened them? This is how we're going <laughs> to... All focused on the on Hubble, right? <laughs> Amazing. Oh man. Yeah. So they're saying it looks yeah. like they're they want to boost Hubble to a more stable orbit. That's what it's looking like. All right, that's fun. That's, that's what we're seeing here. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. 
See, he's I mad about the whole to like do that. Yeah, he's gonna throw it. Just push. Your it. mom was yeah. involved in catching satellites by I hand. Know, she was. So maybe Spot I'm still two? I'm finding a spot on the next mission for Brought her. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah. And she never got to do a spacewalk. Only my dad did. So Jared, I think that I don't that think was, you're listening, uh, you but know. if you are, here we are <laughs> making the connections. He's ready. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was really hoping this was going to be like uh, the NASA showed up to the press conference and like they just told us to sh show up and we didn't know what it was about. And Jared's like, "Listen, I'm just here to tell you in person that we're we're bringing it home. And if you're mad about that, you can come at me, but we're going to get Hubble and I'm going to put it in my living room or something." <laughs> now he's a real billionaire. <laughs> it's pretty smart though when you think about you know I mean I. The first stories I covered at CNN were were the Branson launch, and then the Bezos launch, and then the billionaire backlash, and all that. So if you're Jared Isaacman, going up and helping out something that benefits all of humanity, hard to knock that. I mean, yeah. it's he's always smart. done it. Right. We've said PR this before. Yeah, we we've talked about this before. But he's like a very strategic billionaire. Like he's yeah. he walks yeah. the line of like not being a terrible evil billionaire really yeah. really well like you know <laughs> i think that's the difference between having like nine and 140 billion though like you know i think that the extra yeah, yeah. two digits changes it a little bit <laughs> that's all i'm thinking listen i'm not knocking yeah. though because everywhere this is the first time in my life i went all over yellowstone national park and grand teton national park all the payment terminals had the shift four logo on it like that that's where i was paying so mm. i was like oh look at this Hmm. Nobody even knew. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really hadn't, I hadn't started. I hadn't seen it anywhere out I this way. About Jared Isaacman too either. Yeah. So. Hmm. Anyway. Super billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we go back to regular topics? We're like way off here. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Dart. I wanted to talk about Dart more. Dart. Dart was one of the Let's ones that broke into like popular culture. Oh there was my a god. There was a Google thing. There was like everyone was talking yeah. about it. Do you have a sense, like, are you good at this now, Kristen, of like, oh, this one's going to be the popular oh, yeah. culture icon? Yes. And and it's, it's, I actually felt like at first I wasn't, I was having a hard time, like, reading what would break through, uh, you know, with CNN producers, like, what, which ones would, like, really, you know, they would really take to and want to get on their show. Um, they were super into all the, like, you know, Russia, you know, I mean, the implications, the fact that like Russia and the United States versus Cosmos and NASA are still so tightly uh, intertwined up at the ISS is pretty remarkable. And that story really uh, penetrated, so to speak. Um, but DART, I mean, DART's a no brainer. DART, I, I will never forget, like the first time I talked about it to, you know, some of my, you know, bosses at CNN, and they were just like, this is, this is crazy. This is actually <laughs> happening. Um, and even being there the night of, uh, I was at APL um, mm. for impact night. And uh, I mean, it's just neat to be where history is happening and where they're, you know, doing something that truly betters all of humanity. Um, so I, I do think I, my only complaint is that I feel as though NASA and APL should have allowed us into the actual uh, watch party as opposed to the sanitized media room. Um, we were very vocal about, you know, vocalizing our, our displeasure on that. I understand why they didn't let us in, but <laughs> it would have been better if they had. That was the big room where they all cheered on the big screen. Is that the one you're talking about or the, well, that's, that's mission control. I under the mission operations center. I understand why they didn't want to let us in there. That's where you're actually doing work. I'm talking about the watch party where all the employees, all the, all the people who'd worked on dart, Ooh. they had, you know, they had a watch party and you know, we wanted to. So this was like the Virgin galactic launch all over again. <laughs> I wasn't at that one, but I saw the pics. You were, you were like, eh, stay over there. You go on that side <laughs> of the time. Far away. They kept yeah. us far away. You know, it's, the media pays. As, yeah. you know, as a reporter, yeah, you want to be in with the real, the real people, not yeah. just with the other media. The other no reporters. offense. I love yeah. the space reporters. They're great, but you know, you want to be where the action is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't dark kind of amazing the... that this is the first time we've done this? Because this, this one, I was thinking about this the other day, like, of all space missions of all time, this was the one that we could have done, like, the second year we've flown to space. 
Like, just smash a thing into an asteroid? We could have done that many years ago. Isn't it wild that it took until 2022 to do that? And it's also wild to me that we were looking so far, like, this is a government agency actually doing something proactively, right? I mean, I I mean, love it. Love that. The fact that you have a government agency doing something before there's a need. um, (laughs) Yeah, way before, based on our current. I mean, there's there's definitely a need. We just don't know about it yet. Which is well, the crazy right, thing, right? Right. Yeah. Like we're not like I mean, so they did, they did do the, yeah. no that we know of. Is all my only point. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's um they did the deep impact mission in true like, true 2005 or but something. But that was I mean, to like wasn't, see what happened, right? That wasn't like was a, a change. I think orbit. it was like a science instrument. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a, a poke it and see mission, what happens. Right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And you could you could count the Ranger missions too. I mean, it was the moon, so it wasn't going to go anywhere. But they were still smashing stuff into yeah, it yeah. if you really wanted to get That's down true. to that. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Harder to measure. I mean, the one good thing about Dart is that we were, we got a little nervous after Ryugo and Bennu that this was going to mm-hmm. go right through, and it didn't. So that's good mm-hmm. that we know of. Yeah, we don't know yet. Well, <laughs> it's a pretty big tale. Yeah. Well. I, I'm excited to, you know, see if it actually worked. Like it, it looks yeah. like it did, but you know how it's going to take a while before we actually know if it actually moved it off its yeah. orbit by what 0.8 percent. Yeah, when you um, think about it, you're like, so, okay, I can see how that works, and then you watch like the visualizations of the relative size, and you're like, oh, I don't think that could work. Like that seems <laughs> that seems like really bad bad math on that. But yeah, yeah. But they think they can take 10 minutes off the orbit, so you should be able to know that. Like yeah. You know, pretty soon Probably I would think within, you know, week, within, right? within six to twelve orbits, you'd have yeah. an hour to two hours of change in that. So it should be pretty. Oh, I think they should be able to figure it the out. The scale up quick. math. I'm struggling at that though. Like, how do we make time, man? Just time. A spacecraft big enough. Yeah. Uh, to scale, scale over into time. It? Like scale okay. over time. Scale over time. Like it hit just... it way early. You mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you hit, you... if you hit it. Five ten years out, and then right. that little yeah. millimeter adds up over time, right? So yeah, but like yeah. I feel like we'd have to do bigger than the satellite bus that we just sent at this thing. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, you can do a whole starship. There's small. enough. There's enough around. Like we could do a whole starship, no problem. I think it was only 600 kilograms, so I'm pretty sure NASA could muster. Uh, yeah. You know, another we, zero. That was 600 kilograms sent to basically Earth orbit. Like not really that much <laughs> that's different. True. Vulcan nine yeah. did it. Yeah, and that's true. So if if we can if we can put a uh, you know if we can put three tons on on Mars, I think we can probably scale that one up an order yeah. of magnitude at least. <laughs> I'm voting a whole starship. Yeah. yeah. Starship with a, with a new like shepherd a- in its fairing. <laughs> Give it a little kick. Just have end. like an unmanned starship crash. Yeah, into blast it right asteroid. in there. Just full yeah. of concrete. Just fill it up yeah. with concrete. As much, <laughs> hundred tons of it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the theory, right? That's the working model of a starship. So, yeah, um, basically. Yeah. Looking forward, Chris. So, what do you guys think? Who's what's going to launch first, Starship or Artemis? Ooh. 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 I used to be less uh, less about this, but. Yeah, I was like really, really confident that Artemis was going to beat it, and it still might. I think it's probably still leaning towards Artemis, but yeah, it's really not, close. Like, it's not a sure thing. It's really close way. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's let's do some tactics on this. Right, we're late September. Artemis not mm-hmm. rolling out till early November. Great band from South Jersey, by the way. Uh, at best, um, I. I think it has to be. I mean, this is if you're you want me to bet. I think yeah, it's yeah, we're doing bets. The week of Thanksgiving, because that makes a lot of sense. Um, Jim Free has said that he doesn't want. It's not their preference for a nighttime launch, and that whole week in yeah. mid November is launching at you know midnight or one a.m. Um, so yeah, it's brutal, maybe right? they need to go. Though I think this and it's a holiday. Of course, it's going to happen um, on a holiday. All right, Thanksgiving for our. All right, so we got two months until Artemis. SpaceX <laughs> is up to seven engines on the booster. They're rolling it back in for my new favorite phrase in space robustness upgrades, which either means we didn't finish it the first time or we broke some shit and need to fix it. And it's my favorite phrase because you can say that about anything. Like, Grunsfeld was going to Hubble for robustness upgrades. You know, like, that's exactly what he was doing up there. It's like the direction of goodness one. That was a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> uh,. So, presuming like two months is a long time in Starship years, so 
Could they do a full 33 engine engine firing by then? Presumably. I think so. Yeah. Wouldn't be shocked if 33 engines fired up in October. I'm still betting Artemis, but like by a month. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. 60 40 Artemis, you know. It's yeah. like it's not that not that that far from from a, fl- a coin flip. How many times do you think that you could be doing these live hits from Kennedy Space Center for Artemis One before either the public <laughs> or your CNN producers start getting annoyed? Yes. <laughs> How many more times do they have in the, you? I was down there for like two weeks for the first and second launch attempt. Ten days. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm blocking off the last half of November, really, right? I mean, you kind of have to. Um, you know, and that is. You know, we talk about getting, you know, folks internally at CNN excited about the space stories. That's the other thing is you also have to kind of, you know, inform folks about the realities of a first test flight and how this is, you know, while very delayed, also quite quite normal. So yeah, I don't know. I, there, I'm going. I'll I'll be there. Are y'all, y'all <laughs> going to be there? Oh, almost certainly not. Yeah, yeah certainly no, not. Almost tough. certainly not at this point. We don't have that CNN travel just, money. Yeah, so. we all the travel yeah. money comes out of our pockets, Kristen. <laughs> so I, ha- I have to say, though, I heard that. Unless you need like an extra your, YouTuber on in tow, then let us in, know. So. In one of your previous podcasts, y'all were talking about a beach house that y'all rented for. You did um, for Artemis, and I'm I, I'm I don't think we're going to do this at CNN, but I think it's a great idea uh, because we're <laughs> staying at you know your generic. Hotel. Staying at the, the, the Hilton or the Marriott Lake over Canaveral. in Titusville. And, right. Yeah. I think you know, it's not really a bad plan the... because if you put enough people in it, I bet you the cost per night was below whatever airport hotel style thing, you know, you end up getting into. So, yeah. 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 And we could walk. It's the, the cancellation beach. policy, though. That's where it gets you, right? Like, <laughs> so you got to be, you gotta the be flexible had... with those cancellation policies for a space yeah, launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one I had was like cancellation, you know, so we I checked in the 28th for that first launch attempt and I, it was can- free cancellation up to the 24th or 5th or something like it was really not bad. Like I was pretty impressed with it. So, um, yeah, I don't think they knew there was a launch going on. So <laughs> <laughs> they weren't watching CNN, so they didn't know. But <laughs> I can't promise that we'll do the beach house for Cape Canaveral again, but I feel like a Boca Chica be- right. beach house is not too distant in the future. So. <laughs> we'll let you know for the long gaps in the schedule next time. There you go. Jake had nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. That was a tough week. But <laughs> Are there other particular stories that you foresee in the next like year or two that, that you have mm-hmm. marked off as like, that's the one that I can convince everyone about? Yeah, Artemis flies. What's next? Well, um, I, the one that I keep going back to that... Um, CNN was really cool about and let me spend like a week and a half in Canada filming um, is just, you know, mega constellations and their impact. This particular story was about the impact on on astronomy, Um, but just mega constellations in general in low Earth orbit, all of that debris. You look at, you know, the GAO just put out a report today. You have uh, Congress trying to stop the FCC from putting up its own rules about orbital debris and getting these satellite operators to uh, get rid of their junk, um, you know, within five years. So um, I just think that whole aspect of um, the private sector just rapidly outpacing government regulation at a global scale um, and the impact that it has on all sorts of things. But the thing that just really gets me is the the night sky, the astronomy angle, right? I mean, this is, um, you know, one of those those last frontiers of uh, environmentalism. And I think it's so cool what SpaceX is doing with Starlink satellites. And, you know, how do you balance that with, um, you know, the, the needs of astronomers and, um, you know, eventually, you know, the needs of, you know, launches, humans, crewed and uncrewed, just getting to and from Leo. So. Um, I, that's one story that I keep going back to, and it's kind of in the weeds, um, but it seems to really break through yeah. um, the mainstream audience as well. It's in the weeds now, but like yeah, yeah. now people's cell phones are going to be hooking up to satellites, and that's a obviously Apple just announced their thing, but I'm looking at these AST right. space mobile satellites, and I'm like, 
Hmm. Damn, if we thought Starlink was a, a bright object, like, wait till that thing unfurls its antenna. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I feel like it's going to be brighter than Venus. Like, it looks in, it looks <laughs> wild. If you've seen the fully unrolled, and not even this, they have this prototype that's like 64 square meters or something, and then their next one is like four times that. I don't know. It's huge. It's crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And don't the uh, ESA is doing all that space power stuff? Aren't the space power satellites supposed to be like really, really big panels and stuff too? Because like you're basically moving a solar farm mm -hmm. to space. Like, don't they have to be? Mm. It's a stupid, yeah. stupid project. <laughs> yeah, he's mad about that. Yeah, no, I don't want it's to a, talk about space yeah. powers. As I well, <laughs> and then I think, the, and the other big thing that interests me, and this kind of like ties into my old political reporting days, um, is just the. This, the relationship with Russia just fascinates me. I mean, here we are talking about nukes and Putin using nukes on the world. And, and yet we have, you know, a, a Russian cosmonaut about to launch on a SpaceX rocket, like, and, and a, a NASA astronaut launching on a, a Russian Soyuz rocket last week. Like, I, I think that, um, that never ceases to baffle me that this partnership has survived that and i'm just so yeah. curious where it where it goes in the future like is <laughs> is iss is that's is that the end of it with with roscosmos and nasa do they yeah that's it does roscos do the chinese actually play nice and let roscosmos in on their fancy it doesn't even seem like that though last week at iec they did this presentation about their I lunar know. plans and they're not anywhere in there and maybe it's because they were in france and they didn't want to mention it which it's a great decision if that's what it was. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's wild though. But like, also, it's like, again, like exactly to, right. to bring out my Russian space hawk uh, take here, Jake, like if you're a China hawk, <laughs> let them go to China. They're going to just like cut holes in their spaceships and dock them to Chinese space station instead of ours. <laughs> what are they going to lose at that <laughs> point? It, it does make you wonder though, like what what has to happen before NASA's like, okay, yeah, we can't we can't do this anymore, yeah. <laughs> like because <laughs> if he's if he's annexing territory and mobilizing Belarus and uh, blowing up yeah, yeah. pipelines and, and arming, like if he so, went yeah, for Cuba like, again, yeah, how, how would that do? But I mean, there are, there are so many <laughs> no red knows. lines that have already been crossed over the last few months with Ukraine. Like, I, I remember back in, you know, March, like, I'd be like, oh, this is it. This is the thing that, like, <laughs> severs yeah. the tie. How do you, you know, and it, it it just keeps going on. And, or you know, you have, you go from Rogozin to Yuri Borisov and all the, we're pulling out. No, yeah. we didn't mean it. That was a mis mistranslation like how many times <laughs> does this go on and i'm just that whole element of it i'm just amazed um that it's it's really it stayed intact it survived and i'm just i'm surprised it i mean in our world we make a, a big deal of it but that's just one that i love talking to people about i'm like did you guys know this <laughs> this is happening well and you didn't even mention that like Kazakhstan and Russia are not in a good spot right now either. Like they have they have started going against you know Russian dictates and stuff. So yeah. I don't know. What if their lease is up? Then it doesn't matter what we think about the space station, but like you know, their lease isn't up for like a billion years or whatever, but Yeah, it's a big long lease. <laughs> but a lease is a piece piece of paper, you know? Like that could change. So just, yeah, you can. You can if you're if you're Kazakhstan, you can make life difficult for the Russians pretty yeah. uh, without without touching the lease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't need the paper for that part. <laughs> no, it's just no. crazy. No. And I'm sure Long Russia times. could make life difficult for Kazakhstan. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Don't they don't care about paper? Making life difficult <laughs> is, a, is a Russian specialty. So. Uh, <laughs> Nick Hague is like, I told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well. Well, Kristen, if people do not partake in the Kristen Chris Fisher cinematic universe, uh, what what's wrong with them, and where should they go to fix that? Um, gosh, <laughs> CNN.com. <laughs> I've I've been really bad about Twitter lately. I just I don't know. I had a I'm not the most prolific tweeter. I had some bad experiences during. My, my previous life and previous jobs and I just I stopped doing it then oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah I did and it's weird. you were really close to somebody really tweeting. good at Twitter it's so strange that you just didn't pick that up at all <laughs> yeah 
So um, yeah, so I'm I I'm on Twitter, but I'm not the most <laughs> prolific tweeter. Um, but anytime there's a big launch or a big space event, I'm uh, on TV all the time. With oh my, I forgot to put this in earlier. My favorite moment from you covering Artemis One was the time when you got you got so meta and probably didn't even know about it when you were like. <laughs> This is the best model I can find. It's a space shuttle, so bear with me. And I was like, yes, that's exactly the... <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> so the full disclosure, we tried to get a um, uh, an SLS model, and it like didn't show up on What did you do, so raid like, Bill Nelson's office? And you were like, what do you got in here? <laughs> you got a space we, shuttle, great. We, had, we went to the gift shop. We went to like an old gift shop near KSC. Bought, I didn't know that. Bought that's amazing. a space shuttle model. Yeah, and then and it was like nice. It was like a very it looked amazing. It was huge. I was trying to find the clip when we were huge. talking. It was a giant. Like you were, yeah. you needed somebody else to help you with that. It was huge. We had to have a stand. Um, but then we had to figure out like, do we leave it here for the second launch attempt? Do we get a storage unit for it? <laughs> <laughs> Should have put it in we, the beach house. Do we? <laughs> yeah, do I ship it back? Do we check it? Like, what are we gonna do with it? So yeah, if you have amazing. a beach house, I could leave my models at. That'd be great. <laughs> Oh, I'm oh, so man. glad I brought that up. That's a better backstory than I hoped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's no. good. I figured yeah. you went into like the was... CNN archives and we're like, oh, they still have this around. Like, that's great. No, we just, um, we needed one. Amazing. But then I was like, shit, like, how are we going to explain this? Like, people are going to like see that we like haven't gotten, we haven't got the right model. <laughs> so I was like, all right, it's all good. It's basically, SLS is basically shuttle anyway. Yeah. Just. I thought it was a great moment. Off. You got to, you like yeah. dove into the depths of nerdery and no one knew, you know, it's great. Hey, <laughs> until now. <laughs> Jake, what you got cooking these days? Uh, so I finally put out my episode about the Artemis launch. Um, it was uh, a long time coming. <laughs> I, I I had severe writer's block after that trip, like trying to put this together because I was like trying to like say something interesting and new about SLS, which is like pretty hard to do because they they uh, oh. you know a lot of words have been written and about that rocket. So, um, but yeah, I, I put it out. So that's behind me now, um, and uh, working on uh, some Venus stuff coming up here. So there's some interesting drama with uh the nasa call for new frontiers 5 and um how venus is not so much a part Ooh. of it and why shouldn't it be and there's uh some fun stuff going on there so we're going to unpack that uh, pretty soon in the next episode the the venus community always the the you know they're always grumbling yeah. <laughs> rightfully they're so i'm not saying that's bad or, or <laughs> they're, wrong. <laughs> they're just always yeah. persecuted <laughs> yeah yeah it's they've like, uh so they've got a storied history of being left out so yeah Amazing. Yeah. What about you? Uh, last week, I talked to Bob Pierce, who's the associate administrator for aeronautics at NASA, and mm -hmm. that was awesome. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in advance of the show, but between this one and the one I did about space insurance, I've got a lot of like really uplifting comments lately about these two <laughs> very obscure <laughs> topics that have almost nothing to do with what I usually talk about, and I'm like, oh, maybe I've got this all wrong <laughs> on all the other shows that I do, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you're curious about aerospace, uh, Bob Pierce was really cool to talk with. It was like an hour, too. It was great. So. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, do we have a name for this episode yet? Or are you guys going to have to think about it? Oh, people have been putting suggestions. Not a named episode was really, really rough. Uh, we got a couple <laughs> suggestions about soft goods. We got some about the Space Force theme song. We're going to have to Beach sort through. We got, lot. My models at. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to sort through there, but. <laughs> oh, man. Kristen, thanks for hanging out with us. This is uh, amazing. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I had a great time. Uh, I guess next cheers. week, Jake, what I are we really doing? I really didn't do much, make much of a dent, but, you know, cheers. Oh, we did get <laughs> carried away. But... Yeah, talking yeah, to That much. often happens. So, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing next week on this show, Jake? Uh, I don't even remember. Oh, I'm gonna be totally next honest week on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, I'm going to be at Astrobotics Factory and going to see myself a moon lander. And I'm going to look around to what parts are missing from that moon lander so we can talk about it on Thursday. So <laughs> yeah. that we know when the moon lander will fly. 
<laughs> yeah. They're going to be like, let us tell you about our plans for space power on yeah. little cubes at rovers. And you're just looking like, under. And uh, I just, I just have a little checklist here. Uh, propulsion module. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I'm going to print uh, out avionics. like the okay, the you. Apollo go around the horn for go or no go decisions and just shout them out <laughs> and see who perks up. <laughs> That's the plan. All right. So. Well, I'm looking forward to it. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out again, and we'll see you soon. Bye.